Movies sure are something, but only a certain type of something, because they're missing something else. What is that something, you may ask? Well, they're missing a certain level of activity. I mean, it's a pretty inactive experience. You just sit there and let it play. Like the other night, I was watching The Revenant, and out loud I said, You should have double jumped there. <sighs> if only there was a way for me to live out my favorite new movies, where I would be the one in control. Oh wow! I hope this trend lasts forever! It will, right? Movies, they used to look like this, and now they look like this. A natural evolution, I know. In a similar fashion, video games used to look cheap and chintzy, now they look expensive and chintzy. The two mediums have tons of similarities and bleed over, especially in the last couple decades. Game series that used to have a distinct 8-bit sound to their music and no voice acting now use live orchestral music and actually have voice acting. Hell, actors who worked exclusively on screen now star in AAA games. But in the field of marketing, movies have always had a leg up on games. The medium has been around much longer and in general has a much broader appeal. Like you're gonna have a way easier time convincing grandma to take you to Aladdin than having your help you be Super Metroid. Games were only really marketed towards either children or gamers, and not necessarily the average Joe. However, in recent years there has been a shift in how many people actually play games, which has resulted in them receiving beefier budgets and development time to try and compete with other entertainment. And this certainly wasn't the case a few decades ago. Like, I doubt the people making Empire Strikes Back were losing sleep over competing with Berserk. So at first, games were initially used as sort of a marketing tool for movies, and that's how it was for a couple of decades. A lot of big films got some sort of video game tie-in. The original Star Wars trilogy, Star Trek The Motion Picture, Ghostbusters, E. On the 2600, Top Gun, Jaws, and Back to the Future on NES, and so on. But as time went on and tech was really advancing, they were able to give you a more authentic adaptation of the movies versus whatever these were. Instead of what is essentially given the same prowess as a promotional McDonald's toy, these were bona fide games sharing the license that, to an extent, stood on their own. See, all those earlier games weren't exactly adaptations per se, I mean they kinda were, but not really. Sure, some parts of them were similar, and maybe followed the same basic plot, but they were really more so spiritual adaptations that used the branding as opposed to actually adapting the story. But come the fifth generation, they were able to use voice acting that actually sounded like it wasn't thrown in a microwave. <laughs> This console generation was where the movie tie-in game started to find its stride. The N64, and especially the PS1, could hold way more data than any console before it, and thus were able to make an actual proper tie-in game. These weren't perfect by any means, everything was a bit too pointy and awkward looking, but when a few years earlier the Super Nintendo could barely show you a polygon, these were welcomed with open arms. Some of the more notable examples of tie-in games in this era are GoldenEye 007, which is also credited as the first proper FPS on a console, and... Well, for the most part, people talk about GoldenEye. Most of the movie tie-ins from this time were kind of shovel-wary and did have that feeling of just trying to use the brand, but they still gave their own experience versus just something you'd play for like 30 minutes. But when the sixth generation started, there was no holding back. The consoles were powerful enough to process more data leading to bigger and better games. The voice acting finally found its footing. The games were printed on DVDs just like movies plus whatever the hell Nintendo was doing. And there were so many movie tie-in games that came out of this. No, like for real this time. The Lord of the Rings games, Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets, Into the Matrix, Spider-Man 2, and Shrek, which was a launch title for the original Xbox. It's also important to mention that this is during a time when computer animated movies were coming out left, right, and center, and being that they're computer animated leads to their styles lending very well to games. Like you ever wanted the interactive Ratatouille experience? Yeah, at home or on the go, which do you want? It really can't be understated how many movie licensed games came from this decade. Virtually every somewhat big movie got the video game treatment. The Spongebob movie, Revenge of the Sith, The Golden Compass, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, B-Movie, The Chronicles of Riddick, King Kong, Robots. Really, if you saw a movie in the 2000s and then went over to GameStop, there's a chance you could keep that experience going. Movies and video games were starting to seem like they were having a symbiotic relationship now. But did Hollywood pump out enough movies per year to satisfy this tie-in thirst? I don't know, but the gangster film sect of gamers was finally tapped into. Yeah, I'm not exactly sure what happened here, but crime movies, not even new ones, were starting to get licensed as video games. The Godfather, Scarface, Reservoir Dogs, and even The Sopranos. 
Ooh, can't wait for those new Tony cosmetics to drop. These were undoubtedly influenced by GTA and trying to capitalize on its success. While these were moderate to lukewarm and influencing the market, it still shows that they felt movie licensed games could go toe to toe with major game franchises. This really was the golden age of tie in games. And with the MCU kicking off around this time, they also started to pump out games where each individual movie and character. Iron Man, Hulk, Captain America, and Thor all had games. Now this is awesome, I can't wait for it to lead to the Avengers game. Uh, wait, where, where, where's the Avengers game? Ah, maybe it's just taking its time. What other movies have come out? Ooh, The Dark Knight Rises, I love that movie. Let's check out the game for it. This kind of looks low poly, why is it? Oh, it's just an iOS game. Is, is this going out of style? I hate to say it, I really do. But video game tie-ins are starting to lose steam by the end of the seventh generation. There is not really a concrete answer as to why, but if I were to speculate, it would be that AAA games started to command a much bigger audience. When Halo 3 was released, cinemas were experiencing low theater turnouts, which was unheard of for a game to do at the time. The budgets for your average Call of Duty were about the same as a given blockbuster, so publishers would certainly want to divert a lot of their resources towards that. Instead of games being a supplemental industry to movies, it was now standing right up there with them. The trailers released for games received just as much, if not more, attention than when movie trailers dropped. And ever since then, games have only gotten bigger and more popular, while movie tie-in games? They never really recovered. I mean, Avatar, the biggest movie of all time, received a game, while Avengers Endgame, which briefly took its spot just a decade later, nothing. While it's common for a TV show or movie now to receive a mobile game, AAA game tie-ins are, for the most part, a thing of the past. But movies are just so popular, they're based on franchises and characters we all love. Still waiting on that annoying movie. So why won't they just make more tie-ins? Well, the answer ultimately lies in the fundamentals of when one is developed. Here, let's start from the beginning. Back in the day, a studio would call up Atari and be like, Hey, we're gonna make a game based on a new movie. Here's a couple of photos and a copy of the script. And Atari would go, Okay. And they would make something that barely represented the movie. But you know what? That was fine, because not much was expected from these kind of games. But over the years, games got more complex and took longer, which meant if a studio was asked to make a game, they were always playing catch up with a film. Films, in a broad sense, aren't as time consuming and complex as games, so if a movie is made in a year and a half, then a game needs to be released at the same time, often sooner. Which means they need to wait for the story, art style, actors, etc. to be finalized. Like, you don't want to work on a tie-in game with one actor and then, whoops, they're replaced with another halfway through development. This can lead to tie-in games often not being the most accurate to a new movie coming out. Like, the Revenge of the Sith game was fun and all, but I don't remember half the shit happening in the movie. And talking about modern AAA games, if you expect a studio to make a licensed game for a movie coming out next year that's as good looking as this, you're kind of dreaming. The two mediums are just so big they can't be as symbiotic as they used to be, at least in the same ways. Nowadays, it's more popular to make a game that ties into a franchise releasing a new movie rather than basing it off a specific movie. EA's Battlefront was given a specific release date of Fall 2015 specifically to coincide with the release of The Force Awakens, and boy does it show their dev time was cut short. But other franchises do this all the time, Spider-Man and the Avengers being recent examples. While propping up the main attraction, these being films, but still standing firmly as their own pieces of entertainment. Spider-Man specifically is now a PlayStation staple and one of their biggest system sellers. Will we ever see the triumphant return of movie tie-in games? What, what do you think? But will they ever truly go away either? No. Movies are still constantly influencing games, and vice versa. The term cinematic is thrown around all the time for how games look. Films' presence in games will always be seen. Okay, so we just talked a ton about games based on movies. What about the opposite? What about movies or shows based on games? I'm in over my head here.